Ari, what did uh, what did you just say about Bill's face? It's thin. Ing. How's it? Uh, what are you down here, Bill? Uh, forty-four. Forty-four pound weight loss is outrageous. <laughs> well done, my friend. How good does he look? He was really good looking before, <laughs> and like to do it through the football season. He's he's got more. He's going. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm not done yet. Bill Landis, Ari Wasserman, Doug Lay Maurice here at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center giving you our outrageous predictions for the Big Ten Championship on Saturday. Ohio State, the underdog against Wisconsin. Bill, what's your outrageous prediction for the Buckeyes and the Badgers? You always fake me out when you turn toward Ari and then come back here. Like Misdirection. That's, yeah. I think I'm going to have more time to collect my thoughts. <laughs> my, uh, my outrageous prediction, and this will sort of give you a hint, as to where I'm leaning for my game pick, uh, my outrageous prediction is that Ohio State will not trail in this game on Saturday. So you think the game will end in a tie? I think the game will be 0-0. Zero, zero. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, I just think from from watching Wisconsin, I think Wisconsin's defense is, is pretty good. It's probably as good as any defense that Ohio State has seen this year. But they've also, I was looking at the numbers a bit, they've played Six teams ranked 100th or worse in total offense this year. Six. Half their schedule has been against anemic offenses. And I don't think they've seen anything close to what Ohio State can do. Now, obviously, JT Barrett's not playing. Cardell Jones is a quarterback. And he's an unknown. And I'm probably drinking the Cardell Jones Kool-Aid a little bit. But I think that the offense is going to be okay enough to take an early lead on a team that hasn't played very well in the first quarter all year in Wisconsin. They've gotten off to some slow starts, and that's a, that's a problem for them. So I think Ohio State gets ahead early. And stays ahead. It's close the whole way, but I don't think they trail at all on Saturday. There are some, also some stats out there about the uh, anemic defenses that Ohio State piled up its yeah. its offensive numbers yeah. against and that Ohio State has played. The outliers, Michigan State, Ohio State played a great offensive game against a good defense. There's some other decent defenses, Penn State, Michigan, Virginia Tech, where Ohio State has not been as good. One thing I will say, Cardale Jones Kool-Aid, delicious. Ari. <laughs> Am I allowed to give away like my game prediction now? By who he sort of gave his away. Game yeah. Game. So go ahead. Cardell Jones will not throw a touchdown pass, but Ohio State will win. Okay, that's like a two-step thing. Okay, I get that. Why well, you give me a weird look and then you weird me out and then you no. make me second guess myself? No. I can see that. Go. It, it actually will tie into my pick. Prediction. Yeah. My outrageous prediction is is that Ohio State's offense will not be the beneficiary of a Cardale Jones touchdown pass. I didn't say Jalen Marshall wouldn't. Now, wait. Now, will he account for a touchdown? Because how, how many has JT accounted for? 45. 45. JT's accounted for 45 in 12 games. Will, Card will Cardale account? Will he rush for a touchdown, or will he account for no touchdowns? You're overthinking it. I'm trying to make it a little more outrageous. but He will account for one. Okay. Wouldn't that... Well, then you're just, like, muddling but, it up. But not – Cardale Jones Cardale? will not throw a touchdown pass. Cardale Jones will not throw a touchdown pass. I don't know if he will score on his own rushing, but Ohio State will win regardless because it's about the players around him. That's all we've talked about all week. And, you know, Ohio State has had some quarterback issues in terms of having to replace people, and people have come in, JT, and, and performed well. And I think that there is some truth to that. Ohio State's offensive line has grown – as the year went on, um, Ezekiel Elliott's a powerful runner. Um, Jalen Marshall has emerged, maybe not so much last week, but the week before, as a person who can change the game from the H-back position. And I just think Ohio State has enough tools offensively to still win this game, even though they're kind of in crisis mode at the quarterback position. My outrageous prediction sort of will tie into that, which makes yours like six parts now. I'm going to say Jalen Marshall. Jalen Marshall will throw two touchdown passes. So now that means that we either we're both triumphantly right or it's just a dumpster fire. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, we are going to see Jalen Marshall um, at quarterback. Tom Herman the other day when he was leaving interviews on Monday said he was asked, uh, how did Jalen Marshall throw it? He said, better than you think. I think that's a good goal line package. I'm not predicting two 80-yard touchdown passes for Jalen Marshall. I'm predicting when things get tight, when everything's bunched up defensively and the safeties are up and everything and they're going to be stacking the box to stop Ezekiel Elliott, who are you going to put at quarterback to try to go against that, both in the run game or the pass game? I think putting Jalen Marshall at quarterback, running the zone read with Jalen Marshall and Ezekiel Elliott, getting Jalen Marshall on the edge. If it's open, he runs. If it's not open, he throws a little pop pass to a tight end. I think that is that is your red zone formula in this game because I think just to have, to have Cardell Jones try to drop back 
on second and goal from the eight, I think is not going to work. And I think to try to hand off to Ezekiel Elliott, they're going to have 14 defenders at the line of scrimmage. So I think they're going to have to get creative with the whole game plan, but especially in the red zone, two touchdown passes for Jalen Marshall. You're, you're obsessed with the jump pop pass? Yeah. And I was like looking down, waiting for you to say jump or pop pass. And then when you said it, I went, yes. I thought you were going to do a little jump. I think it was it was interesting to me that we, we were in here today for on Wednesday for interviews and they were practicing, finishing up practice. And someone asked Urban Meyer, has, J- or has Jalen thrown the ball? And he said, yeah, well, you know, he's working on it right now. And then Jalen Marshall was on that end of the field throwing a pass while we were in here. And maybe I'm being a conspiracy theorist, but I think that's a bit of a smoke screen. You think it's a smokescreen he's not going to throw passes? I don't think they're going to take a chance like that in a championship game, no. I think they have to take a chance like that in a championship I game. love conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> don't get already started. <laughs> Stick with our coverage here all week leading up to the Big Ten Championship. We will be over there on Friday. They have a uh, coaches' news conference Friday afternoon. We'll have live coverage of that. We'll have, obviously, coverage of the game um, Saturday night. And then this turns quick. We'll find out at 1245 on Sunday whether the Buckeyes are in the football playoff or not, and of course, stick with us for that. So, for Ari Wasserman and Bill Landis, Skinny Bill Landis, I'm Doug Lamarice. Thank you for joining us here at Cleveland.com.